Hey coders, welcome back to another exciting episode of learning Laravel and Livewire e-commerce series. This is video number 8 in the series. So far we have covered many different things. In particular, we have finally completed the category management. We have covered so many things so far. If you are new to my channel and new to Laravel, I would highly encourage you to go and watch all of those previous 7 tutorials. In this particular episode, we are going to start everything that has to do with the product management. Now since this product management is going to be almost similar as category management except that it will have some more things such as the image processing and we will touch upon a concept called view composers as well. Besides these two concepts everything is going to be the same that we have already covered in our previous episodes. So I'll be a little more quick explaining this product management. The only aspects where I will pay special attention while explaining the concept would be view composers which you will have to define in service provider. So we will be discussing service providers as well and the product management and the image processing because each product needs to have at least one image and that image will be displayed in the customer facing website view, the actual online shop. So without further ado, let's get started. Before getting started, let's think about what components of Laravel are we going to need for product management. Since products are resources just like categories, so let's recall what kind of entities we needed for this category resource. First of all, we need to have a table in the database. So that means we have to create a migration. Then once that table is created, we will be accessing that table through a model. So we will need to create a model associated with this product table as well. Now, since models are accessed and manipulated through controller, so we will need a controller as well. Besides that, we will also need some routes in the web.php file as well. So let's first create all of those components. And this time we are going to create all of those components in one go using different flags. Now over here, in order to create all of those entities that we just discussed, we have to start off by creating a model. So the command to create a model is php artisan make model and let's define a name for the, for the model since it has to do with the product. So let's give it a name product. Now we want a controller associated with this product to be created in one go as well as well as we want a migration that will create a table in the database. So we have to attach some flags. So first of all we need a controller so double hyphen and then controller. Then we want this controller to have all the methods associated with any resource to be already defined. Hence we are going to attach another flag resource. So this will also create the skeleton for all of those methods that we manually define for the controller associated with the categories table. But this one will have already created skeleton code or steps for all of those methods in the controller. Now the last thing that we want to create is the migration table or migration file. Now hit enter. Okay, so as you can see the migration table has been created successfully. Let's go a little up and we see a model has been successfully created and we are waiting for the controller to be created as well. Okay, so this is taking longer probably because it has to, it has to create all these steps for all those different methods as well. So we haven't yet controller associated with the products created over here because it's still being created. We have to wait a little longer. Okay, so now the controller has been created. As you can see over here, there's a controller, but let me show you the notification as well. Product controller created successfully, and we can see the product controller over here as well. So now if you notice, this controller has already a stub defined for a method called index. Then one for create, which for the category controller we had to define ourselves. Then we have request. Now if you notice, since this is a store method, so the Laravel is clever enough to figure out that it will need a request object. So it has already added a parameter to this store method. And then since this show will definitely display a one particular product, so it has already typed in the product class as well. Likewise, the edit has product object type in it, and then update has the request object as well as the product object. So wherever the Laravel thinks that you will need product object, it has already typed in a parameter with that object. Okay. So now let's have a look at the product 
model as well. So let's go to model and this is product. It's currently empty. Close it. Now let's go to the migration table because the first step that we have to do is that we have to create a table in the database. So the last one is the one create products table.php. So this is a new file and over here now we are going to define some columns in this up function okay now since we have already discussed everything so let's get right into defining the columns that we will need for the product step so obviously the first thing that we will need is a name so since name is a string shall we make the name unique maybe not because it is possible that we have a t-shirt in the ladies category as well as in the gents category so let's leave it just there leave it as it is now the second thing that we need is that we have to link this particular product with some category that means we will need to have a column that will act as a foreign key and using that foreign key we can create an association between this product table and the category table now since this category has to link up with the id in the category table so let's give it a data type big unsigned big integer because the categories cannot have negative values as their IDs. Now the name is category ID. Let's bring this up. So first ID, then category ID, then name. Now text and the column name is description because we might need a description consisting of few sentences. So that's why I'm giving it the type text, not string because this string will be converted into varchar in our database table and the text is going to be mapped to a database type of type text okay so we have name description we will need a price and since this price will most likely contain the the decimal part so we are going to give it let's give it unsigned decimal because again the prices can't be negative the name is price now we need another column for the quantity unsigned big integer or unsigned integer because quantity cannot be huge quantity okay quantity next we need an image so it's going to be a by string the name is image okay now we need to define foreign key relationship with the categories table but before that let's do one more thing which is while we are implementing this project we will have to resubmit this form again and again and again many times and many times it will encounter errors we will again be returned back to the form and we will again have to fill in the field so in order to save time as well as typing what i'm going to do is that i am going to make all of these nullable this means the form which is going to display this table if i don't enter values for these columns it will still be submitted This one as well image is also nullable okay now just because it's nullable it doesn't make sense to register a new product in the database table without any price or quantity so i am going to give it a some so give it default value for the price let's make it 9.99 and for the quantity let's make it 10 and the image can be null okay so these are the fields or column that we will need in our database table associated with the products now we have to create a link between the products in the products table and the category in the categories table because we don't want any product to be associated with n with a category which doesn't exist so that will make our product an orphan product and we don't want to do that so we have to define a foreign key now to define a foreign key we have to call a method called foreign and as a parameter we have to provide the column name through which we want to be linked with the other table so we want to use this category id as that column category id category id now this category id references so references database table named categories so this is the name of the table 
through this category ID column, we are referencing a table, sorry, we are referencing a, a column named ID on a table named categories. Bring this down to the next column. Now we are going to define what happens if the category ID itself is updated or deleted. So we are going to define two more constraints, which is on delete, what should happen when the category associated with this particular ID gets deleted. So in that case, we want all the products which are associated with that ID or with that category should get deleted as well. So, so on delete, we want to cascade. That means we want the effect to trickle down to this to the product table as well. We are also going to specify what happens if the category ID itself is updated, not deleted. In that case, we also want all the category ID values in the product table should also get updated. So cascade. And that is all. We have got the name of a product, description, price, quantity, or oh, we need status. So table status is boolean. Let's give it name status. Let's make it nullable first so that we can avoid providing the value for this one if we want to. So nullable and then default is true. Okay, that is all. We are, I think, ready to run this migration. So to run this migration, we are going to use a command php artisan migrate it says running migration creates products table done so this pro uh, table has been created successfully now let's go and check out in the micro uh, mysql workbench so let me refresh it so our uh, database name is elara shop and we have this product table currently this is empty let's check its structure id begin category id begin name varchar 25 255 character description is of type text it's nullable so the default is null price is decimal it can have two places after the decimal point okay the default value is 9 9.99 quantity is integer default is null didn't i put any okay so basically what has happened is that I have given this thing uh, as a parameter to this nullable function. What actually I was supposed to do is chain in another function or method named default and there I had to provide this value. Now since I have already run the migration, so first of all, we are going to revert back to the previous state. Okay, never mind, we are going to learn a new concept. So to revert back to the previous state before running this migration, that is before creating this product table, we want to revert back to that state where we did not have that product table. So we are going to say PHP artisan migrate, but this time we want to roll back. Now, this will roll back all those migrations that were created in the last migrate command. So, in our last migrate command, we only created one table. So, that table will cease to exist. Now, if you want to revert back even one step further, we could provide the tape over here as well. Give it some value 1 or 2 or anything. If you don't provide any value, so by default, it's assumed to be tape equals 1. So, fingers crossed and hit enter. Let's see what status have we got. It says could not open input file because the spelling is incorrect. So PHP artisan migrate rollback. It says rolling back migrations and again create tables done. That means the migration is done. Uh, rolling back is done. Now let's again go back to our database table sorry mysql and refresh it this refreshing should make this product table disappear okay and now as you can see the product table has disappeared so that means this table does not exist now what we are going to do is that since we have already made the changes over here the mistake that we are making now let's again rerun the migrate command so that this table is created again hit enter okay now 
Assuming the, the command end successfully, I have come to the MySQL workbench. Let's refresh and we again have this product table. So let's look at its structure. Now quantity is int and the default is 10. Okay. Image default is none tiny status. For the status, it has turned into tiny int because in, in MySQL there is no Boolean data type. So it gets automatically converted into tiny int. And the default value is 1, 1 means true. Created it and update it. Is. Okay, so now we have successfully created a table in the database. Now we are ready to define how to interact and manipulate that table using Laravel. So that means we have to define the route, the logic for the controller method, as well as any changes that we need to make in the model itself. So let's first define all the routes that we are sure we will be needing for products resource. So back to the code editor, close this migration. Now let's open up web.php. This is where all the routes are defined. Now since we are going to define routes for the resource, so that means we are going to have all the routes that we have for the controller resource. Okay, so just to quickly recap, since all of our backend route starts with the admin, so all the routes are defined within this route, which is prefixed with admin. Just to give you reassurance, so this is the starting, starting curly bracket and this is the ending curly bracket. Okay. Over here, we have first of all defined the default route where we just put the slash admin, nothing else. Then, when to this slash admin, we attach something like slash categories, then we go to this route. Now, since all of these routes are part of a controller, so they have been defined with this controller method. So, this means all of these routes will be sent to the controller named category controller. Then, we have attached a group. That means we are grouping all of these routes. And in the middle, we have defined the actual routes. So we are going to do the similar thing for the product resource. So let's copy everything from here up to here. Copy. Now let's paste everything. Now this time, since the route is product controller, so let's let's replace this name from category controller to product controller then they have been grouped now they are going to be prefixed with slash products and the route name is product.index okay now second one let's actually replace all the categories with the product okay so second one is product slash create create name is not category.create product.create so let's change product okay we also need to change the name of the route parameter as well from category to product okay we are done with defining all the routes we will not be coming back to this file web.php now we have to go to the controller so let's open up product controller Let's start with the top. Okay, so we already have imported the product model over here. Okay, so index. Now this will return us a view which is inside the admin folder. And within this admin folder, we are going to have a folder with the name product or products. What name did we give to the categories? Okay, we are going to resources, views. Okay. So we have singular category. So we are going to create a folder product. Okay. And within this product folder, we will define all the views that are associated with the product resource. So we are saying we are returning a view in the from the index method. So we are saying in the admin folder, there is a folder named product and there we have a view named index.blade.php. Now let's define this view. So in the product, let's create a view index.blade.php. Okay, so this is going to be 
the index is going to show us all the products like this one over here. So we are going to see similar layout like this one where instead of categories, we will be seeing all the products. So what we are going to do is that we are going to copy index file associated with the category. So let's go to the category. Sorry, not create. We are in Virginia index. So copy everything. Control C. Close. This is index but associated with the product. So paste over here. Let's first change the heading for products. Okay, the view that we were working on, let's go to product controller. We are supposed to send some data with this view. So basically we have to attach a parameter which is going to contain all the products which are currently in the database table. By the way, there aren't any products in the table at the moment. But if we had, we have to send all of those products to this view. So we have to provide some variable over here which will represent all of those products. Let me take you to controller, category controller and just see how we have got all the categories by type hinting an object with the category and then on that object we are chaining a method called all. So this will bring in all the rows in the table and it stores it into this categories table. So this is one way but for the product circle since as you notice the framework hasn't type hinted it with the model so what we are going to do is that we are going to go with another approach so that we learn both the approaches. So what we are going to do is that we are going to create a variable name product and we are directly calling a method on the category class. The method is same all but this time we are using the category class itself. So this makes it the static method category all. The syntax is different because in the category controller we were calling this method on an object of type category but over here we don't have any object. We are directly calling this all method on the category class itself. So therefore the syntax is different which indicates we are accessing it as a static method. So now we have to attach this product with the view products plural. So we have to make sure the name that we provide over here is exactly same as this one minus this dollar sign. Okay, so now let's go back to the index.blade.php associated with the products. So let's make changes. All products, we are going to keep this controller. However, we are going to change the route name from category.create to product.create. Add new product. Then for else category replace it with products and singular category replace it with singular product. So this will iterate over products array one element at a time and each element is going to be referenced through this singular product variable. Let's keep these class names same because we have defined the CSS, SCSS styling with these names. So Let's keep them same for the time being. Now these are all the column names associated with the table. So for the products we have more columns but let's not touch them for the time being. Let's go down. Again keep this class name same. Now let's change the variable from category to product singular. So we have a column named ID in the product table. We have a column named name in the product table and we also have a column named status in the products table. So, so far so good. Now let's go down. So the route name is, let's change the route name from category dot something to product dot something. Okay. Now for the route parameter, let's replace this category with the product. Okay, this is another route name, so product and this one is a Okay, now this empty part will execute if we don't have any products to display. No products to display. And since currently we don't have any products in the table, so we will see this text in the browser. 
if everything has been changed correctly, no mistake have been made, then hopefully we will be able to see this text in the browser when we go to from slash categories to slash products. Okay, even though the titles are changed, but we are still able to see the categories. So, so okay, that's because we were supposed to put product over here, not categories. Let's refresh. Okay, now all products, add new product is missing and then no product to display. Good, so at least our index is working. Now since there is no product to display, we don't know how it will appear since, since this product table has more columns. So they can't fit all in one row. So that means our styling is going to get affected. But we will look into it later. While talking about it, I just remembered that we haven't taken into account the, the many columns that we have created specifically for the product table. So we have to take into consideration those columns as well in the index.blade.php file in the index view. So from now on onwards, I'll try to say index instead of index.blade.php. Okay, so we have ID in the products table. Then we have a column with the name category ID. like this okay then we have name and then we have description okay we have price and quantity and we have an image field okay now we have to do the same for the values so product ID Let's change this to category ID. Then we have name. Description. Then what have you placed next? After description comes price and quantity. Okay, then what do we have next? Then image. Okay, so name was suppose. Why do we have two names? Okay, let's, we have this name column over here and this one over here. Maybe I copied it twice. So let's replace this with the column name image. Okay, product ID, category ID, name, description, price, quantity, image, status. Okay. So everything has been taken into account. Now we, now the only thing left is we have to see how the styling is going to be affected since this one, this table has a lot more columns than we had for the categories table. So we might need to revisit it once we have products to display. Okay. For the time being, index portion is done. Now let's move on to adding a new product to the database table. Let's put T over here first. Okay. Let's close this index for the time being. Let's move on to the create one. Okay. Now this will return as a form. When a request comes to this, this route, a form, a view will be returned which will contain a form. So let's return that view. Return view admin dot product dot create. Now let's create this view. Let's close this category and in the products table, let's create a new file called create.blade.php. Okay. Now let's copy everything from the create view associated with the categories table. Control all, control C, 
close it. Now this is the create view associated with the products. Let's test over it, everything over here. Okay, the title add new product. Then let's let's first delete these comments. Okay, now replace this category with product dot store. Then create post farm group name from category name to product name. Then product status. Okay, let's move down. So there are how many input fields? One is for name and other is for status. Okay, obviously now we have to add more input fields but for the time being let's see if we are able to see this form in the browser so now the route is going to be slash product then create okay good now we are able to see the form obviously this product needs more fields but at least we are able to see the form now we have to include those fields over here now let's start from the beginning so first of all we have name after the name since the ID is going to be auto generated so we don't need an input field for the ID so we are starting with the name but after name perhaps the second input field should be what category this product should belong to so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy this form group copy and paste it over here so over here I am going to change it to product category so which category this product should belong to Let's repair this category. Copy and replace this ID with the same. But for the name, we need category underscore ID. So that it matches the name that we have defined in the column field. It's not mandatory, but I'm going to keep it this way. Otherwise, you know, we tend to forget that the variables defined in the Laravel framework, how they are related to columns defined in the database table. So that's why I am keeping it exactly the same the way we have defined column name in the database table. So name is category underscore ID. Now the value old again, category ID. Okay, then again, message name, let's replace it. Category ID and the error message if there is any error it will be displayed over here. Next let's place another farm group so copy paste it over here so after category ID let's define description. Now for the type over here is going to be text area. Okay and the name is going to be description okay we have to make changes over here as well description okay now we need another Farm group div, div for the price. So let's change okay let's change it to type is number okay so this is price now we need one more for the quantity copy now this one is quantity now let's every word which is price with the word quantity okay now let's put one more for the image replace every quantity with image whole word ok 
Okay. Then product status. Okay. Okay, the product name div starts here and here. Then product category div starts here and and here. Style find okay. Then we have a farm group okay. The closing angle bracket was missing. Let's go down to the product price. Put the angle bracket over here. Sorry, this is not input of type text area. This is text area itself. Then we need the closing tag for the text area. And we have to move this value. Between those opening and closing tags. Okay, so this is how it looks and it has got some of the styling that because of being part of a div which has the class farm group, some styling has been applied which has basically fixed its width and height. It doesn't however have those smooth edges and the shadow. So for that, what we are going to do is that we are going to open the uh, SCSS file associated with the create view of category because we are using the same file over here as well. So let's open that, that SCSS file edit create farm and this is farm group and we are defining styling for input fields and selects let's add text area to that okay that's better okay now product and status let's close this now this is the product price Okay, this is done for the quantity put the angle bracket back and for the image again put the angle bracket back okay good okay so everything seems to be working perfectly so we will insert the product name and then we will Put the product category but basically we have to put in the category id over here at least for the time being but we have to make sure that this id that we place over here must match one of the ids mentioned in the categories table so id 1 2 3 4 and 13 that means we can't put id 5 6 up to 12 and 14 onwards because we don't have these categories over here so for the time being we are going to place these IDs manually but later on we will replace this such that this input field will be replaced with the drop down list and it will contain all of the categories that are currently present in the categories table. So for example if, if we delete this category women then the drop down list will not contain that category women. This way we will not be able to insert any incorrect ID and to make that happen we will be using a concept called view composers so we haven't yet covered this concept yet so i'm going to hold off that concept because i'll explain that concept in detail and currently we are just just quickly making changes because so far what we are doing we have already done so this view composer concept will be done at the end or maybe i will dedicate a separate video the next video most likely in which all the new concepts which we are going to utilize for this product category i will cover it separately so that means for the time being, we are going to put this category ID manually and another thing, this image. So we will not, oh did I, I haven't changed the type of this image and it, it's still number. That's why we can see these, these triangles. So let's change the type. Input type is file. And that means we have to go up to the form. Okay, over here, we have to attach another attribute which is encryption type and the value is multi-part form data. So whenever we want to upload a file, we have to set this attribute for the form. Encryption type is multi-part form data. Okay, but the actual uploading of the file over here, we will 
since this is a new concept as well we haven't covered it yet so i will explain this concept in the next video as well so that we can start off with fresh mind okay so before we fill in the fields and submit the form let's define the logic in the controller which is going to receive this form and store it in the database so we have to go to the product controller and this is the form that is going to receive it now again since this one doesn't have any parameter which is which is type printed with the product model so that means we are going to create an object of type model inside this function so let's create a product and in fact let's comment this out for the time being first of all let's see let's see if we are able to receive the data then we will have to do validation and then we will move on to this line okay so for the time being let's just um, just dump and die all the input fields that we receive okay so let's put something for the product name category id let's put one description something price 56 for quantity 11 and don't select any image let's submit just to be quick okay so we are able to receive this data now let's first validate it and then store it in the database now to validate it we are going to create a helper function private validate and let's pass in the request let's not pass anything because we have access to the because we have access to the request through request helper function so we are going to store it store it in the variable name data so to this request let's use the validate method and we have to pass in an array the first parameter is name and it's required it doesn't need to be unique because we might have same name for different categories okay then category id it has to be required then we are using this pipe symbol to attach another validation rule and this validation rule is going to make sure that the value that we have provided through this category ID is matches one of the IDs mentioned in the category table. Okay. So the validation rule which enforces this is exist. We are basically saying if this value exists, then column. Now we have to mention the name of the table in which we want this to exist. So the name of the table is categories. So we are saying this value must exist in categories table. But now we have to mention the column so comma id so we are saying whatever is the value of this category id has to match one of the values of the id column in categories table sometimes we don't need to mention the id in, in that case we expect that there is a column named category id in this table but since the column name is not category id it's just id in our case so we have to provide the column name as well so we are making sure that this ID matches one of the IDs mentioned in the categories table. Let's put semicolon over here. Now the third validation rule is description. Now we know this is optional. So we are going to say sometimes. Then for the price, again, sometimes it has to be number as well. Sorry, it's not number, it's numeric. Okay, let's put this last because we want, sometimes we will not be providing the price. So in this case, sometimes we'll figure out that if it's not present, then it's okay. If we place the number column in the in front, then the Laravel will try to first validate this price column or input feed against that rule. So we know that we might not be providing the price Therefore, we have to make sure that we put sometimes over here. So numeric and let's say minimum is, what shall we say? Minimum is one and maximum can be any, any value. Okay, so let's not put maximum. 
Okay, after cries, then comes the quantity. Again, sometimes, and that is numerics. Minimum can be zero, so it's fine. Okay, let's put it anyway. In a case, no negative value can be placed. So minimum is zero. Okay, now what? Image. Again, optional. So sometimes, what is status? Status is also sometimes because it has default value defined in the database table itself. Okay, I think those are all the fields. Are we missing anything? Description, price, quantity, image, no. Okay, now let's use this function because Laravel is complaining as well that we have defined but not used anywhere. So we were working in we were working in the store method. Okay. Now let's die and dump the this. Whatever we see from the validate, we haven't returned anything from the validate. So, return data. Okay. Okay. Let's refresh and it says resubmit. Yes. Okay, what did it say? Access level to F HTTP controller product controller validate must be pub must be public as in class F HTTP controllers controller. Well, the thing is this: we are getting this error because we are getting a complaint from Laravel that I have defined a function named validate with access level. In our case, we have defined it as private, so it's saying it must be public because there is same method defined in the controller class which is public so basically this is saying there is already a function or method defined inside this controller class and because every controller that we make extends this controller class so that means every controller has already a function named validate and when we define our own helper function with the name validate so basically it tried to override the function which is defined in the controller class which is fine we can do that there is nothing wrong with that the reason that it caused problem is that the validate function defined inside the controller is public and we are overwriting the function but we are making it private. So we are kind of restricting or shrinking the access level of that method. We can extend the access level but we cannot shrink it. So that is the problem. So now we are going to fix this by changing the name of the controller, sorry validate function. So, okay, let's make it validate data. Now let's go up. Validate data. Okay, now let's give it another try. Refresh. Resubmit the form. Page expired. Okay. Let's refresh it. Some name. Category 1, product description, price 45, quantity 11, 12, whatever, submit. Okay, validate status does not exist. Another error. Hmm, this is causing the error. So basically we are defining a validation rule called status. Since there is no such validation rule in the Laravel framework, this is causing the error. So let's make this since this is also since the status also has default value so let's make it sometimes as well okay let's refresh we submit the form and we finally got the data name category id description price quantity status since we didn't provide any image file so that data is missing okay now we are able to where is the store method so now we are able to validate our data. So let's replace this diagram and store the data in a local variable. Okay, now we are all set 
to store this data inside the products table. So that means we need to call create method, static method, because we haven't defined any object of type product. So we are calling static create method on product and we are passing along the data. Now once this operation is successfully accomplished, it will return us an instance of product model which we can store it in the product variable. Now this product variable will contain the instance of the model that we just inserted. And by that I mean the row that we just inserted in the product table. And now we can send that product instance to the view which will display the data that has been inserted into that new row. Now we need to redirect a user to the show view where it will show us the recently inserted row or recently inserted model. So return to route. We are being rerouted. This is not the usual place for returning the view associated with the show, which we will return from here. So this to route function will make another HTTP request to this show method. And here we are supposed to return the view. Therefore, over here we are not returning the view rather we are redirecting the user to that show view to that show method over here this one okay now since this is a route so let's give the route name which is product dot show and since this will require the data the newly inserted product model or product row so compact and product. Now all we need to do is go to the show method. Now over here we simply have to return the view admin product show compact and product. That's it. Now let's go and define this view, this show view. So let's go to the products folder. Okay. Let's define new file show dot blade dot php. As usual, we are copying everything that we have defined in the show view associated with the category. Control R, Control C close it. Now this is the show view associated with the product. Test everything over here. Now let's make changes. Let's remove the clutter. Okay. Let's replace the heading to product details. Let's remove this as well. Route name is going to be product.index. Now for the rest of the contents, what I am going to do is that I am commenting everything out because I need to apply different kind of styling while displaying the newly added product. The reason being, since this product table has more columns to display, so they cannot be displayed in a single row. I have to display each column on its own row. So we will have column name and next to it we will have its value. And on the next line another column name and its associated value. So that is the pattern that I will be applying. And to easily apply that pattern I have to reorganize the structure of the HTML contents itself. So what I am going to do is that I am creating a div with the class name product details. And within this product details div there is going to be one div for each column value pair. So product, product column, and within that product column, a div for title, I'm giving it class name pTitle, and another div for value. So let's start with the first column, which is ID, and the value is product ID. Since the product has seven columns, two, four, six, eight. Okay, eight columns ignoring created date and updated date. 
so we have eight columns i have already created one so i need to copy paste it seven more times two three four five six seven okay first one is id second one is category id so third one is name then comes description then comes quantity then let's place price and finally status okay now for these edit and delete buttons let's copy these two components let's go up and at the very end let's create a div called p actions paste those two components okay so this is the html structure that we are going for delete everything now you need to notice i have placed this product hyphen show file in the show file which is associated with the category we have show.scss file but i have created another one with the name product hyphen show that contains all the styling that will be applied to the show view associated with the product so let me show you the product show so the reason i'm not including this scss in this tutorial is that i haven't done anything new over here all this is just basic styling that i have been covering in my previous tutorials there isn't anything new so i don't want to waste your time or distract you with the styling and in any case you can apply your own styling that's not the main aim of this tutorial the main aim is laravel and livewire so in order to keep the length of this tutorial short i am omitting this styling that i have defined but i am slowly scrolling through it so that if you want to follow the same styling you can pause the video over here and copy all the styles there aren't many styles that's it and if you like you can follow them okay now we are all set to create a product in our application through the laravel application but wait i need to i forgot to put the we don't want to get the mass assignment error again so let's handle that issue already protect it guard it and empty array so this means none of the columns or none of the fields are protected and they could be mass assigned okay now let's go and create a product okay so this is the form let's give it the name product one category we have to choose one of the categories currently available in the in the categories database table so let me go through them just to be sure that we are not using any id which doesn't exist so we have id 2 for main 3 4 and 13 i have accidentally deleted the women's category so we don't have one and then we have we don't have 5 up to 12 and then we have 13 so we have to make sure we are using one of those ids okay so product id let's make it 2 description some random text price 33 quantity 56 and let's submit category variable undefined did haven't i replaced all the category variables let's search for it oh okay okay i haven't made changes in the views sorry in the components so we have this category over here another category over here then this one this one this one and this one let's replace all of those with product 
Okay. Okay. Since the error that we received was in the view, so that means a product has already been added. ID with ID one, category ID two, name is prod one, and we are able to see that product right now. So this is the styling that I have gone for. So now we should go back and go back to the index page where we are able to see all the elements in a single row. Now, as you can see, there are lots of columns and they cannot be squashed in into this amount of space. This means this index page also requires a major rehaul, particularly when it's going to contain an image as well. So as you know, that image occupies a reasonable amount of space, even if it's a thumbnail. And since we don't have any image over here, so it will be a futile exercise to try to revamp this page without having the dimensions of the image and how much space can we squeeze for an image. So for the time being, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to display just few of those columns over here so that we will be able to see all the products over here. And once we have learned how to upload an image, then we will come back and restyle this page. So for the time being, I'm just going to display the ID of the product, its name and status and these actions. The rest of the columns I'm going to comment out so that all of these columns could be displayed in the single row. So name, okay, ID, category ID, name, description, comment out, price, quantity, image, and status. We are keeping it. Then again, ID, category ID, name, then quantity and image. Okay, so now at least for the time being, we will be able to see all the products in a decent organization. After learning the image processing and associating and uploading an image for each of those products, we will revamp this whole page again. For the time being, we are happy with it. We are able to see the list of all the products. That means we have covered logic associated with the index route. Now the only thing left is updating and deleting the product. So as far as the front end logic for the delete is concerned, we don't need to do anything because we have used components. However, for the back end, we have to define the logic in the controller so that the deletion actually takes place. So let me close irrelevant pages. Okay, let's go to the controller and let's go to delete. one okay so over here let's call a method on this product object which is an instance of product model the method is delete so this will delete the row from the database and now we want to be rerouted back to the index page so return to route admin dot product dot index this one doesn't require any data e is missing okay so have, hopefully this will work let's save it one more time refresh now let's click on delete and hopefully we won't see this product anymore so delete product dot index not defined it is defined okay sorry sorry yeah okay so i was supposed to mention the route name rather i have given the directory structure given the directory structure okay but now okay let's now we are trying to again delete the product but it has already been deleted so let's go back to the products and as you can see there is no product to display just to be sure let's put something randomly Submit and we can see the product. Go back to index page and here, here we can see the product. Let's view it this time and from here now let's try to delete it. And the product successfully got deleted. Now we have to, now the only logic that we have to work on is the editing logic. So let's put in some product. Let's make it product 2 now. Category, make it 3 this time. Description, something. Price, since we have got the default value, so let's see if we don't provide any quantity. 
will it get submitted? It should. No, it says the quantity must be a number. Okay. Four. Submit. Now, when we click on this edit, we should be redirected to the, to the form which contains all of this current information. And from there, we can make changes to this product. Since we haven't defined any logic in the controller associated with updating a form or any views, so I'm not clicking on this edit at the moment. Let's go to the controller and when this edit button is clicked, we will receive a request in a method which is called edit. Over here, we won't do anything. We will simply return a view admin product dot edit and this will require data the product that we want to update so whatever we have received over here we are simply passing that along this one doesn't require anything else now let's go and define this view edit view so let's go down in the products category okay so in the products let's create edit dot blade dot php now since this is a form so we are going to copy edit view associated with the category so control all control c close it and this is the edit view associated with the products so let's test everything over here we don't need to worry about styling over here because the way form is styled every column has their own respective row so we won't be having any trouble over here so let's make changes update product then the route is product.show let's replace all the occurrences of category okay now product name, 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 old value is name, otherwise name from the product. Okay, so this is name. Obviously, we can't change the ID, and but we can change the category ID. But first, let's replace every instance of word category with the word product so that we don't run into errors which says missing category missing variable category Okay, so we have name and status to update over here. Now let's create another farm group. So I'm copying this one, copy, paste. Now after the name, let's write category ID, not just category, because eventually we will replace the category ID with the category name. But since we haven't yet learned how to do that, so I'm going to keep it ID at the moment. Okay, let's change this name. Okay, so name, sorry, category ID name now comes description. Everything seems to be fine. Let's add one more for the quantity. Okay, now one more for price. Hmm. 
then we have to do one more form day for image but since we are editing an image means the already associated image might be replaced with a new one so we should be able to see the current image if there is any associated with the product we should be able to see that image and then we should get this input field which lets us change the image associated with it so again when we will learn about image processing we will revisit it and insert this image over here as well but for the time being let's change the names with image now we have to change the type to file because this is an image okay this is status we have already changed the status form group so for the price the type is number quantity again type is number we could make category it number as well let's not change this we call it will bring up those triangles and eventually we have to replace this with the drop down list of category names so there's no need to change it over here okay that should be all now let's refresh it and when you click over here we should be redirected back to yes over here but we have done something wrong over here so no styling let's go okay so we haven't placed the component over here okay where can we get the component from the show show will take us to the index page we want to go back to the let's copy this this is edit over here test it over here now the let's change the route to product show okay and this one requires route parameter so control x and sorry route param is Okay. Okay, good. So if we click on the back, mm -hmm. we did something wrong. Route name. That's because let's put these columns. So we forgot to put these columns because this is now a variable. Okay. Refresh. Go back. Yes, it's working. Click on edit and we are already getting all the current values now let's change this category from 3 to 4 and prod one make it but we are not going to submit it because there is nothing to receive this data so let's define the logic in the controller let's first check where is this form going to be submitted okay now since this form contains might contain a file so we have to made encryption type multi-part form data okay product dot update okay so over here we will receive this request so as usual once we store something into our database that we have received from the user we have to first of all validate it so dollar sign data equals this validate data and let's pass in the no it doesn't require request object okay now we have already got access to the instance of the product we can simply call update method on it and pass the data that we have received then we want to be Rerouted. Where shall we reroute? We want to be redirected to show page. So 
product dot show and over here we have to provide the data compact because this show route do need the route parameter okay fingers crossed let's submit okay no nothing has changed it's the same name and same id let's save it one more time okay let's edit it let's change the name to p1 and submit okay the name got changed good so it is working now this is more than enough for one video in the next video we will have to handle the image processing we will also have to learn about the view composers that means we will also have to learn about service container and service providers and we also have to replace this one and zero with the active and inactive keywords what else is there oh yes we will also be starting to learn about relationships between different tables so since these are all new concepts except for this one which, which we have covered in the previous one but since the length of this video has already stretched out so i'm not going to do this in this one but the rest of all the things are going to be completely new which we haven't yet covered so it's going to be very exciting video don't forget to watch and i'm hoping really really hoping that you have liked this video and you have come this far and you have been with me all along this tutorial so that means you have watched my whole video if that is the case and if you haven't subscribed please don't forget to subscribe comment like and share this is all the help and support that i expect from you and i hope you will be generous enough to give me until next time happy coding bye bye